Good afternoon. Welcome back. We are late coming back to you here with our birthday video, our afternoon installment video, if you will. And we have a handful of birthdays today. Uh, we do have one cardless birthday, which I was really, really surprised about because I thought for sure I would have one, but I do not. Born on this date in 1934, sadly passed away a few years ago, um, Mr. Bobby Unser. Of course, Bobby won a few Indy 500s in his time later on became uh, a color commentator for ABC Sports during the IndyCar and NASCAR broadcasts, offering a lot of insight. He did run some IROC races, ran a handful of NASCAR races back in the 60s and 70s. So today, Bobby Unser would have been 89 years old. Also celebrating a birthday today, born on this date in 1959. Got a handful of cards of him, Mr. Scott Lagacy. Scott Lagacy Jr. had a birthday earlier this year. Scott Lagacy, a road racer, of course, had uh, started out in his NASCAR career in the truck series. So you see with the uh, Rick Hendrick, Jeff Gordon-owned truck that was painted up like Jeff's DuPont car. He ran the inaugural series in 95 to relatively little success. No wins, handful of top fives, top tens. Just lack of oval track experience really hindered Mr. Lagacy during this tenure. Like I said, there's not a lot of cards here, so a lot of duplicates, so we're going to zip through that really quickly and move on, because we do have a couple more birthdays here to cover. Born on this date in 1959, but sadly passed away in May of 1996, and I've got to separate a couple cards here, so I just want to make sure that I don't have duplicates here and we got the right ones pulled. And it is an IndyCar driver, if you couldn't tell. There we go. I've got the two that I want. And if you couldn't figure out from the hint of uh, passing away in 1996, Mr. Scott Brayton. Of course, that was the first year of the IRL split, cart IRL split. Scott was driving for John Menard. So we have the English and the French uh, cards here. So there you can see uh, race results and then race results in French. Then the career card in English, career card in French. And Scott was killed in practice. He'd actually won the pole for the race and was killed. And then the team... Uh, put the backup car in, put Danny and Gaius in as a relief driver, and he came back, started 33rd. I believe he finished about 7th or 8th. He had a really good run. Scott was a very, I guess I did leave a duplicate. Scott was a very competent driver, just really lacked equipment. You see Buick, he was a big proponent of the Buick V6 engine. Buick's always had power. <coughs> Here's a picture of Scott Brayton and Poncho Carter. They were on the front row for the Indy 500 in 1985. Scott set, at the time, the one-lap record. Poncho had the four-lap record. Poncho ended up, obviously, with the pole. But the Buicks had a lot of power. They just were not very reliable, unfortunately. Um, looks like sixth in 1989 was his best, at least at that time. Uh, he never really ran a full season. I think maybe once or twice he ran most of the season, but never really... <clears throat> never really did try for a full season of racing. Our final birthday today, born on this date in 1937. NASCAR, IndyCar, sports car, just about anything he can get in. Car owner, Mr. Roger Penske. So we're going to kind of rapid fire through these. Not a lot that I need to say about Roger. Uh, he's owner of the Indy Racing League or whatever it's called now, the IndyCar Series, I believe. Also owns, <coughs> excuse me, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. He's made some good changes to the Speedway. Um, and I know there's going to be people out there that say that there's changes that they don't like. And there's changes that I don't like. Um, most of the changes that I didn't like came back before Penske bought the track. Um, when they took out the aprons and the corners and add the access lanes. And when you added... Uh, when they redid the garages for the F1 cars, it really cut off fan access to drivers to get autographs, to get good pictures. So they changed it for the Formula One crowd and 
I, I just don't like the layout now. Now there's a couple spots in turn one that you can get really good pictures on the oval. But other than that, uh, I, I can't complain about the changes. The amenities are great. It, it's a nice layout. Um, of course, he used to own Michigan. He used to own California Speedway, <coughs> excuse me, and sold those. I believe he also may have used to own uh, Texas World Speedway. Of course, that's becoming a housing development and such. Now you can kind of watch it being ate up on Google Maps. Kind of sad. I've got it, got it starred because I want to keep it in the bookmarks to, you know, just know where that track once stood. But Penske's a Indy 500 champion owner, IndyCar champion owner, NASCAR champion owner, Daytona 500 winner owner, Xfinity Series championship owner. I mean, you name it, sports cars. Uh, Penske goes, and he goes first class. I remember the rigs when he came back to NASCAR full-time in 1991 after dabbling in the late 70s, early 80s. When he came in full time, his rigs were chromed out. His shop was enormous. He changed the game. I mean, he was a single car team up till 1998 when he bought out um, Gene or Carl Haas as part of Cranifus Haas, and it became Cranifus Penske. Then he eventually bought that out. But uh, every, everything Roger does, he goes first class. He goes all out. So happy birthday to all those folks. And a couple of events for today, really quickly before we go. One year ago today, Austin Sendrick won the Daytona 500 for his first career win. Two years ago today, Ty Gibbs won the Xfinity Series race on the Daytona road course. You see, now we're starting to get out of the Daytona 500 stuff. And now we're going to start getting into the, the, the meat of the schedule. So Ty won his Xfinity Series debut on the Daytona road course in 2021. Just looking at some different, <coughs> excuse me. Some different races. It looks like in 2015, Tyler Reddick won the uh, Xfinity race at Daytona. I believe that was the closest finish ever as him and Elliot Sadler came across in a near dead heat. Uh, Trevor Bain won the Daytona 500 on this date in 2011. We talked about that yesterday being Trevor's birthday and all. Jeff Gordon won his last Daytona 500 on this date in 2005. Dale Jarrett won his last Daytona 500 on this date in 2000. Sterling Marlin won his first career race on this date in 1994. And Cale Yarbrough made that amazing comeback in the backup car in 1983 on this date in the Daytona 500. So it looks like about... And then A.J. Foyt won the Daytona 500 by two laps on this date in 1972. So a lot of Daytona 500 history on this date today. And we're going to start minimizing our Daytona facts as we edge out of the month of February here. We'll start seeing more Richmond and Rockingham and California Speedway and Phoenix and some of the other races that were the second and third races of the season moving forward. So uh, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I always appreciate the extra views. And uh, make sure you leave a comment down below. And uh, I'll get back with you as soon as I can. As always, thanks again for watching, and we will see you tomorrow.